An environmental management system helps a business to reduce their impact on the environment. For most businesses, energy use is a big part of their environmental impact. ISO 14001 is the international standard for setting up an environmental management system. You don't have to use it, but it provides a structure and guidance on how to go about it if you want to manage your environmental impact. ISO 14001, they're basically manuals to show you what can be done and what can be saved, not only on energy, but also efficiency. It can also improve your, your profitability as a company and it gives everybody a clear understanding what's needed from them and what they can do. An environmental management system takes a risk management approach. The first step involves looking at the business's environmental impacts, both directly through its day-to-day -day activities and indirectly through the value chain of producing your service or product. The first step in setting up our EMS was looking at what are the aspects and impacts of our operations. And what that basically means is just looking at every possible way that we either impact the environment or may impact the environment. Impacting the environment comes down to our waste to landfill, our electricity use, our water use. We managed to get a consultant that did ISO 14000. He took us off site for two days and we created a register of what we did and we called that aspects and impacts. And the register pretty much listed every single thing we did. So the, the process of ISO 14000 is very important to us in establishing a baseline where we could create a hierarchy of, of our aspects and impact and know that the top of the hierarchy was what we had to get rid of and work on continuously. It gave us something to focus on. Starting with the top of the hierarchy, your business can work out a plan to deal with the high impact issues. 14,000 obviously looks to the environmental impact and, and obviously energy impact. It looks what's actually happened to your drain. Is that dust or that little dust still out there in the factory? Could that run into your drainage argument sack? Uh, if so, what are you going to do about it? And obviously the auditor will then follow up on the next audit and see have you rectified it and what has to be done. The same goes with the energy consumption, what have you. So he wants to have a matrix and you put your points together, what will be improved and how you're going to improve it, and he will then follow that part up. The systematic approach showed Focus Press that using less energy is not always the same as reducing your environmental impact. Our forklifts used to be all gas powered and last year we made the decision to transition to electricity powered forklifts. Even though that this would increase the amount of energy that we use, we still determined that this had a lower impact than the gas bottles. Associated with the gas bottles is the transport of the gas to and from the site, the storage of the gas on site and the different risks that are imposed with that. That's an example of an area of energy where we've traded up two different options and we've chosen the option that actually uses more energy but we think that in a greater picture that has a lesser impact on the environment. While it's not only about energy, a good environmental management system can play an integral part in improved energy efficiency. Many of the skills applied in these examples are reflected in the energy efficiency skill sets in the MSS 11 Sustainability Training Package. For more information and additional resources, visit sustainabilityskills.net.au.